polynomial review part four. Problem 24. This problem is just a combination of several exponent rules and so we'll work on each parenthesis separately and then notice in between it is a multiplication because they're side by side. So if we work on the first parentheses, this is a product to a power. Take the exponent down to each one. So we have 2 to the 4th, x to the 3rd, to the 4th. 2 to the 4th you work out is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. For the variable, keep the base and multiply to give you x to the 12th. And remember, this one's finished, but it's going to be a multiplication between. The next one, same kind of work. It is a product to a power. Take the power down to each piece. So we have a negative 3 squared, x to the 5th squared, and y squared. The negative needs to stay in the parentheses because it was originally, so it will go to the power. Negative 3 times negative 3 gives us a positive 9. Power to a power on the x. Keep the base and multiply. And the y is already finished. And now you notice everything is straight across. We can rearrange it if we want to. Pull the numbers, the x's, and the y. Uh, numbers are going to multiply. One forty four for the variables, keep the base and add when they're straight across. And the y is already finished. Twenty five we have two problems to write in scientific notation. So on um number A twenty five A uh, the first thing you're gonna do is choose where the decimal should go. It has to give you a number between one and ten. Or an alternate way to think of it is you're going to have one non-digit zero on the left of the decimal. So our decimal part is going to be 6.42. That's the only place the decimal will go. It's times 10 to a power. Your exponent will be the number of places you count from the new decimal back to the original. If you would need to go to the right, it will be positive. To the left would be negative. So from our new decimal, we're going to the right, it will be positive. One, two, three, four, five places. So that is scientific notation. For B, first we choose where the decimal will go. We'll have to go between the 7 and the 2 to give us one non-zero digit on the left of the decimal times 10 to a power. From this new decimal back to your original, you're going to have to go to the left. So it is going to be a negative exponent. One, two, three, four places. If you get stuck whether it's going to be a positive or a negative exponent, look at your original number. If it's a big number, it's going to be positive. If it's a tiny number, it's going to be negative. For problem 26, we're going to convert to decimal notation. These are in scientific notation. You just apply the multiplication. And so if it is a positive exponent on your power of 10, it will move your decimal to the right. If it's a negative exponent, it will move your decimal to the left. So for the first one, we have a positive exponent of 3 there. So we're going to move our decimal to the right three places. So 1, 2, we're going to have to add a 0. 3, 2, 4, 0. Now your decimal is at the end. You don't need to write the decimal when it's at the end of the number. For B, our exponent is negative. So our decimal is going to move to the left four places. Right, to get past the 1, that's one place. You're going to need three more places. One, two, three, and then your decimal will go there. So one, two, three, one, two, five. Right, our decimal was after the one. One, two, three, four places to the left. Now we are back in decimal notation. 
you must write the decimal on this problem. It would not have the same value without the decimal. Also, you may see this answer with a zero on the left of that decimal. Mathematically, it doesn't matter, but some of the science classes are very picky about that zero on the left of the decimal. So you could also see the answer in this form.